Ah, greetings fellow Whovians. Whovian Queen here. Hope I have a good week so far. We're going to look at the Tent Doctor era and now continues on with The Sound of Drums. So, here we go. The Tent Doctor Jack and Martha escape the future kind by using Jack's Vortex Manipulator to return to present day London. They quickly learn that the Master has taken on the persona of Harold Saxon and is the newly elected Prime Minister. The Master has created a phone network called Archangel which ability influences the population to vote for him. The three narrowly avoid a bomb placed in Martha's flat and learn that Martha's family has been arrested. The master contacts them to gloat about his seeming victory and reveals that the three are wanted criminals. Hiding in an abandoned building, the doctor uses parts of Martha's laptop and his TARDIS keys to create perception filters so they can move about unnoticed. He explains some of the Master's past and tells them how, as a child, the Master looked into the time vortex and was driven mad. You see a TV report that the Master is planning to reveal humanity's first contact the next day with an alien race known as the Toclophane. Yuna takes over the meeting and moves it to the flying aircraft carrier Valiant. The Master accepts the changes and boards the Valiant with his wife, Lucy. The Doctor, Martha, and Jack teleport aboard and discover that the TARDIS has been converted by the Master into a Paradox machine that is building up power to be activated at the appointed time of first contact. The Doctor, the Doctor Martha, and Jack, and Jack enter the bridge of the Valiant as the first four Tokelfane appear on board. The Master orders Tokelfane to kill U.S. President Winters. The Master reveals that he can see around the perception filters and uses his laser screwdriver to kill Jack, an artificially aged Doctor, 100 years using Professor Lazarus' genetic manipulation technology and DNA he took from the doctor's severed hand, which Jack took aboard the TARDIS. Jack, having been revived, gives Martha his vortex manipulator and tells Martha to get off the Valiant. The Master brings Martha's family onto the bridge as the Paradox machine activates. A massive rift opens above the Valiant, allowing six billion Toclophane to descend upon Earth and kill one-tenth of the Earth's population. Martha tends to the aged doctor, and he whispers into her ear. She uses the vortex manipulator to teleport away, and promises to come back. Bum bum bum. <clears throat> so let's take a little bit. Let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. <clears throat> the first televised Black Time Lord appears during this Gallifrey, Gallifrey flashback. Black Time Lords previously appeared in the spin-off novel *The Shadows of Avalon* by Paul Cornell published in 2000, as well as in the Big Finish, audio, Big Finish Productions audio plays, in which Lord President Rastalon was played by actor Don Warrington, whose likeness is used for the character in official artwork. While the boy whilst the boy master wears a black and white, white robe outfit like those worn by the time Lord, first Time Lords seen on screen in the War Games in 1969, the adult Time Lords are depicted dressed in the ceremonial robes first seen in The Deadly Assassin in 1976. Created by then BBC staff designer James Atchison prior to his film career, these huge stiff collars of the huge stiff collars of these outfits remained the distinct look for officials of the Doctor's race. The collars used were the originals, all known from the Doctor Who exhibition in Blackpool. The seal of Rastalon, the equally well established Gallifreyan symbol employed by H. Sheon, or Sen originally in the non-Time Lord-related Revenge of the Cybermen, appears here for the first time since its prominent use in the television movie. When talking to the world's press cameras toward the end of the episode, the Master begins his speech, People of the Earth, please attend carefully. This paraphrases part of his speech he gave in episode 4 of Legopolis, which began, Peoples of the Universe, please attend carefully. The Master refers to his wife, Lucy Saxon, as his faithful companion, a title regularly assumed by the traveling partners of the Doctor. The Master is shown enjoying an episode of Teletubbies, continuing a fascination with children's television first seen in The Sea Devils, when he was sh shown watching Clangers. He wryly analyzes both series' characters, remarking how amazing it would be if they were real. When confronting Lucy about her husband's fictitious life history, Vivian Rook refers to the fall of Harriet Jones, who first appeared as, a, as an MP in Aliens of London, 
before being elected prime minister by the time, by the time of the Christmas invasion. <clears throat> Although that episode hinted at her downfall due to the doctor's intervention, due to her having a vote of no confidence in the House of Commons, this episode confirms it, mentioning it as being at the same point that the master appeared. In his first cabinet session, the master refers to the reconstruction of the cabinet rooms in Downing Street, which were destroyed at the climax of World War III. Martha's Television's branded Magpie Electricals. This company originally rented and sold televisions manufactured by other companies in the 1950s, as seen in The Idiot's Lantern. The master reveals that he was responsible for Tish getting the job working for Professor Lazarus, whose work he was funding in the Lazarus experiment, hoping to trap the doctor and Martha. In that episode, a circular symbol can be seen throughout the main building featured. The same symbol is visible as being part of the master's ring in this episode, a hint that he is connected to the Lazarus project. He has since incorporated the genetic manipulation technology into his new laser screwdriver. The doctor has previously been prematurely aged in the leisure hive. This is the first episode which explicitly established that the TARDIS's acronistic nature goes largely unnoticed in part due to its perception filter. This was previously hinted by torture episode Everything Changes, where it was explained that this property of the TARDIS has been welded to, to pavement slab. Second use of the term <clears throat> was in human nature, when the doctor noted that his TARDIS could place one on his fob watch. U.S. President Winter states that unit protocols for alien first contact were established in 1968. This was the year that unit was introduced to the series in the invasion. Winters, the President of the United States, refers to himself as President-elect. The doctor makes reference to having to end the time war. This is, this is echoed in the Satan pit when the beast calls the doctor the killer of his own kind suggesting explicitly the Doctor's involvement with the destruction of all the Time Lords in the last Great Time War. This is also alluded to in Journey's End, to a lesser extent, and in the End of Time. <clears throat> in the Day of the Doctor, it's revealed that the Tenth Doctor had a hand in it as well as his past War Doctor incarnation and his future Eleventh Incarnation, but that things didn't end as he had previously believed. The Master, as Saxon, offers Lucy Sex and the Jelly Baby whilst in, inside the Valiant. These are a favorite suite of the Fourth Doctor, and the Master offers them to his wife in a similar way. Both Saxon posters would also appear at various points throughout Series 3, and at least once in the Torchwood episode, Captain Jack Harkness. Now for some outside references. Writing in the episode's BBC Fact File, Peter Weir observes that the Master's introduction of the Jones family as having come all the way from prison, is similar to the style used in the TV show, This Is Your Life. And now on to production and publicity. This episode, along with Utopia and Last of the Time Lords, are treated in several sources as a three-part story, the first such story in the revived series of Doctor Who. However, Rizzo TV has said that he regards Utopia as a separate story, but notes that the, that the determination is arbitrary. Some of the action, some of the car action sequences in this episode were, were filmed by Freeman Adjuman herself rather than a stunt double and took place at Har Harborview Road, Penarth. David Tennant's makeup, in which he's aged 100 years, was inspired by the first doctor, William Hartnell. Nice. The episode was advertised on BBC television with a spoof party political broadcast featuring testimonials from British celebrities Sharon Osbourne, McFly, and Ed Whittacombe, showing their support for Mr. Saxon, a version of which is seen in the episode itself. Also during the broadcast, drums can be heard. There was also a different trailer that showed still shots of the Doctor, Martha Jones, and Captain Jack over the top of which Mr. Sax of which Mr. Saxon's speech, in which he says, What this country really needs, right now, is a doctor can be heard, and at the end there's a small clip of him showing his trademark smile, who has the intent to kill the Doctor public. The celebrity appearances in the episode itself differ from those in the trailer, most only that of Anne Whitcomb, who also appears in the trailer but alongside Mr. Saxon in the episode. 
The BBC have created two fictional websites in connection with these episodes, www.votesaxon.co.uk and www.haroldsaxon.co.uk. The latter one at the time did replicate the video webpages seen by the characters in The Sound of Drums. Hmm, huh. interesting. Now on to some cast notes. Well, Joe Carl previously appeared as the American news anchor in Aliens of London, World War III, and The Christmas Invasion. The spin-off website, Who is Doctor Who, states her name as Mal Loop. This is mangled French for Bad Wolf. This newscaster's name has subsequently been specified in the end credits as Trinity Wells. Zoe Thorne previously voiced the Gelf in The Unquiet Dead. Olivia Hill played a TV reporter in the Sarah Jane Adventures episode Invasion of the Bane. William Hughes, who plays the young master, played, ev played the even younger Casanova in the eponymous BBC serial written by Russell T. Davies, in which David Tennant plays the adult Casanova. And now, finally, the music. The drumming motif used several times in the story bears similarities to the underbeat of the Doctor Who theme tune. Voodoo Child by Rogue Traders is played diegetically within this episode. The song from the album Here Comes the Drums has the phrases The Sound of Drums and Here Come the Drums in its lyrics. Huh, oh, interesting. So, bro, this is a pretty unique and enjoyable episode, and, well, I can't wait to find out how things go down in the final part, which we'll be looking at next week, with Last of the Time Lords. So, overall, I give The Sound of Drums... Four Sonic Screwdrivers out of five. Well, hope you enjoyed their review, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it around, and if it helped me make better videos, be sure to check out my Patreon page. Link is in the description. So, until then, this is Hoobie Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt! When I say run, run! I have a very similarity to the neutron flow. Would you like a jelly baby? Fantastic! Allons-y! Geronimo! Bowties are cool, fezzes are cool, and Stetsons are cool. <laughs>